Pro Playmakers, these are the skills that separate. Welcome to the Playmakers video blog number 11. The topic today is playing in the past, which is a little different take on the way that you should mentally prepare in between shifts, which I find is a common problem for a lot of players. A lot of players have a, do a very good job getting themselves emotionally invested and focused for the start of the game. But during the game and in between shifts, they have a difficult time getting refocused. So what does it mean to be playing in the past? Well, playing in the past means that you go out for your first shift, and after your first shift, you come off the ice and you start replaying what happened in your mind in, the, in, the, in that previous shift or that first shift. And as you're mentally replaying that, now when you get your second shift, you now have all of your thoughts in the past. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you go out on your first shift and you're a defenseman and you come around the net and you go to make your first outlet pass and it doesn't hit the guy on the tape and it ends up being a turnover and it costs your team a lot of time of possession in the offensive zone and it becomes a big problem and you're really aggravated because you know that if you'd have just made that nice clean out you'd have been able to get out of the zone and you would have avoided the 30 seconds or more that you would have spent in your own zone. So now here you are sitting on the bench thinking about something that occurred in the past and now that's going to prevent you from being a good player in the future in your next particular shift. And that's what the issue is, is you're trying to, in, in between shifts, you have to focus on things that are going to help you. Where a lot of this comes from for a lot of players is that, is they play for results oriented coaching, which means you come around the net and you make that pass, then that was a good play, but if you go around the net and you make that pass and it's not, it, it doesn't, it doesn't hit the player or the, or something goes amiss, now when you come to the bench it was the exact same situation, but the results were different. First time you get praised for it, the second time you're the GOAT. And so what happens is, is that it starts to play tricks on you that whether, whether that was the right play, you start second guessing yourself and it affects future performance. What you want to do is focus on the habits that are contained within the game and your own individual habits and the things that you have to do consistently to be successful. And you focus on those sorts of things. And if you focus on those things and you are thinking ahead where you're thinking about what you're going to do rather than what you did, you'll have more success in the future shifts than if you did trying to correct mistakes during the game. Because the reality is, is that you might go shift after shift after shift and still not have that same situation occur the exact same way. So here you are thinking about a very small play and trying to correct it by thinking about it in between your shifts. And the reality is that shift, that, that exact play might not happen for either the whole rest of the game or it might not be for future shifts. And so if that's the case, why are you beating yourself up? All that negativity is going to affect you as you go forward. And like I said, if you play for a results-oriented coach who, when you get on the bench and he starts reminding you about a play that you made or uh, a poor play that you made previously and you start allowing that to affect the way that you're going to play going forward, you're just going to have more and more negativity in your shifts. What's important when your coach is giving you instructions after a shift or after a play, which is important to him to be able to create a corrective moment for you, what's important is to focus on what he wants you to do rather than what you did because that's now a forward thought. And if the coach only leaves it to the point of where what you did and that becomes the focus, you need to ask a question as to what he would rather have you do in that situation. And that's really important when you're accepting instruction from your coach on the bench so that you don't become a negative thought, that you turn that whatever that play was and the coach is now creating a, a, a strong instructional point for you is to make sure that you understand and are focused at the end of the conversation on what to do next so it becomes a forward thought.